to my channel. Sorry, apologies that there has been a very long uh, delay bet uh, between my videos. I just haven't had the time, energy to fit them in lately. Um, but I thought I would do a video now. Um, carrying on reviewing A History of a Dangerous Emotion Nostalgia from where I left off last time. This book's by Agnes Arnold Foster. Uh, Foster. This is uh, carrying on from where I left off last time. And thank you for all your comments and in due course I will get on to those. Uh, so I got up to the 1970s, 1980s. Um, and so in the 1970s and 1980s, to be specific, 1977, a man called David Swerman, who was a psychoanalyst, psycho David Swerman, he resurrected the older version of emotion, the one first described by Klein in the late 19th century. He said, there is scarcely a person on earth who had never experienced nostalgia. It's a human phenomenon, it's normal, unless it dominated the psychic economy. So in other words, it's, it's actually a perfectly normal feeling to have. And it only becomes a problem if it dominates the psychic economy. He called it a kind of mourning, like a sense of loss for something. So it was in the 1970s and 1980s that nostalgia really um, stopped being seen as a problem, as a dysfunction, as a disorder, as a malady, something that needs to be cured, illness. And this also made it possible for nostalgia to become a fad. Something that could almost be, something that could be marketed. Previously, psychoanalysts, the psychoanalysts who have been forced to flee their homes, escaping isolationist, retrograde and ethno-nationalist regimes, had suspicion or a feeling that seemed to glorify these impulses. So many of those psychoanalysts, like Freud for example, um, who were Jewish emigres, but yeah, they saw nostalgia as something very backward and therefore they pathologised it essentially. But things changed in the 1970s. People had grown up in a different world and there was a different set of reflections on the past. There was now a fascination with the so-called good old days. For example, Gatsby clothing styles, films about the olden days. These started around the sort of late 1950s. And many department stores, for example Bloomingdale's in Manhattan, began selling 19th century children's books as well. Um, there was a great uh, sort of fascination with uh, antiques and retro things. So yes, yeah, so nostalgia became increasingly popular after the war and it became what, what, what what became to be known as a nostalgia boom. Collectibles, antiques, the 1920s were idolised, the jazz age was idolised. But there was also a pushback against nostalgic narratives because the current obsession with the past obscured its painful reality for the most part. The golden age never existed for the majority of people. And in 1974, Otto L. Betzman 
published a book called The Good Old Days, they were terrible. They were good only for the privileged few. The 1970s might have been a decade of unemployment, but as bad as things might be now, he argued, they were a lot worse in the so-called good old days. Nostalgia, said one left-wing journalist, prizes its objects out of time, out of history, out of social processes, and it's a politically, it can be, a politically conservative act hankering after a golden age of innocence and joy which never existed. And um, get on this kind of, kind of very kind of conservative leaning type of nostalgia, there was a widespread uh, discontent over the waning of Britain's imperial powers. So this nostalgia recalled periods when the empire reached its zenith. So that was a very, um, yeah, very conservative kind of reactionary um, type of nostalgia. Another book on this subject is by Fred Davis, which was published in 1979, called Yearning for Yesterday, Sociology of Nostalgia. I'd quite like to read that. Nostalgia tells us more about the present, its moods and anxieties, Get about past reality, says Fred Davis. What the past was actually like makes no difference to whether or not people of the present feel nostalgic. So, it's, so yeah, so it very much is um, a present day concoction of the imagination. It doesn't really have much bearing on what actually happened in the past. The present is the trigger for nostalgia. The power of past time periods laying away that could be made to contrast with the present. Nostalgia is not mere remembrance or recollection, it's not mere memory. It has to be imbued with special emotional qualities or opportunities for comparison. Only present-day fears or uncertainties could create nostalgia out of the past. For Davis and other social scientists, like Alvin Toffler, nostalgia is a normal psychological reaction triggered by the fear of change. And Toffler wrote a book called Future Shock, Um, and he, where he describes the 70s nostalgia wave as a psychological lust for an imagined, simpler past. Nostalgia is one of many psychological resources we deploy to defend ourselves against the threat of change. I thought that was very interesting. Do let me know, and if you're watching this, your thoughts on that. If any of you are susceptible to nostalgia or that type of past cognition um, if things feel particularly uncertain do let me know because I'll be interested um, in that. Okay so I'm going to move over to video number two now to carry on reviewing nostalgia history of a dangerous emotion so moving on moving over to video number two now.